Alright, so if you saw part one of the video on my little low-cost hydraulic crimper here, and it's about 500, 500 and something, I don't know, about 600 bucks. Uh, I'll put a link to it out on Amazon, but it's a whole lot cheaper than a $5,000 unit. And if you do a little bit of work, you can either, number one, add something like an early knob so you can adjust this and make it pretty close. But for me, it's not close enough still with the little light thing that lights up to tell you. So I also showed how to add a gauge back here, and you can put an indicator that checks the position of this as you're crimping. And so then you can dial it in. We showed how to calibrate it. We know what numbers we can go to. So now we're ready to set up and crimp some hoses. So you get all your hoses and you get all your fittings, preferably from the same place because they'll have the specs for what you need to put it to. So this is what we calibrated the little guy to uh, for our 3 8 hose. And with the 3 8 fittings, we need to be crimping those little guys down to 20.32 millimeters. So we're all set up for that. We know what to do. Now, let's just make a hose. So we got a little bitty hose to start with. And this is actually was one of the few that was still good on there. But if we measured up, we want to make our ends match. And when you're measuring, you're not going to be able to go all the way down here. You're going to stop somewhere around right there. But you don't have to be super accurate. I can't imagine. So we just set him down there and we can see that we need to have this one right at about 12 and 3 quarter inches. So up here is my new hose. And as you can see, right about there on that white mark is 12 and 3 quarter inches. So what I'm going to do is cut it off and I'm just going to use an angle grinder and it's going to stink. So open up your windows, get everything ready because this stuff stinks when you're cutting through it. But all you need to do is just cut it off there and then we got to clean it because it's going to get a bunch of crud down inside. So let's... And like I say, it's a little bit stinky and that edge is a little bit rough. So I'm going to take it over to the sander and I'm just going to sand that down. Give it a little bit of fighting chance to get inside of my fitting because it warmed up the little steel pieces inside of there. They kind of expanded the rubber. So I'm going to go over and sand this thing real quick and then we're going to clean them out. And there we go. So now we got our ends all cleaned up. They look a little bit better, but there's a bunch of stuff that went in there. So what we got to do is get something like a little stick or whatever. If you're going to do it a long one, you're going to have to get a long stick. But we're just going to take a piece of paper. And you'll see when I shove it down there, it's really important to get this crud out of there because you don't want to get it in your hydraulic system. So we're just going to shove that in there. And then we're going to take our little stick. And we're going to push it down in there. We'll probably do this three or four times. But you'll see when it comes out that all that crud came out with it. And so there's a bunch of black stuff from where you cut it right there with the angle grinder. So that's pretty dirty. Plus it's probably got some stuff in there from where they manufactured it. So we'll run that through several times until we get that cleaned up. Then we'll be ready to put our fittings on. And there we go. So now we're pretty clean. So we got all of the dust and stuff out of there. Now we're ready to put some fittings on. So we got our two little fittings that go on there. And they're pretty tight. I mean, they'll go on there. But what you want to do is mark them so that you know how far to go. They're going to go about that deep. So I need to put a mark right about where it ends up so I know I got that thing all the way set down in there. So let me disconnect this from the vise. All right. So with a paint marker again, we're going to mark that we can get about there. So I need to be right about on that paint mark with that one. So let's just go ahead and put it on there. And I'm going to try it dry just to see if I can get it on there. If it won't make it, I can take it back off. But I can tell you right now, it's about halfway and it is tight. So in order to avoid shoving that on there and getting it stuck, I'm going to put a little bit of soapy bubbles on it. So we got some soapy bubbles and they'll go away. And we just want to put a little bit of soapy bubbles right on the end of it there. Not much at all. And then that's going to help it to slip on there so we can get it all the way up under. So if you're still struggling to get it on there, you can just grab it with a pair of vice grips or something. And keep on pushing and a twisting. Gives you something to work with. What I want to do is end up near that dot right there.
There we go. So I know I'm all the way seated on that one. And they're not coming off. You don't have to worry about marking it because you ain't getting that joker off there. All right. So then I switch over to the other side. Get input on there. Then we'll be ready to crimp this little fellow. And there we go. Kind of hear it when it hits the bottom. So we are good to go now. That's all we got to do to prepare our hose. Now we just need to crimp it. So let's scoot over here a little bit and we'll get this thing set back up. Make sure it's zeroed. Crimp away. And then we'll be in good shape to go through here and crimp another 26 hoses for this thing. So good thing about it is I got so many to do that actually at the end of all this, I'll come back and I'll see just how repeatable this thing was as well as did it survive all of these crimps because it is pretty cheap. I mean, it's only about 500 bucks compared to, you know, several grand for a real one. This is a low cost one, but it seems pretty good from our first trials in part one. So we'll get set up and we'll crimp this hose. All right, it's armed with our 19 millimeter piece of aluminum right there. And like I say in part one, you could see that you could use any size you wanted to. You just got to have a small one and a big one that's within the range of the crimping dies. The dies I have in there are the number five dies and they go from 19 up to 23 millimeter. So now we just got to set this thing up and we got to zero our little gauge right there. And it should be zeroed because I was just doing the initial crimp a minute ago. So if I put the pressure on it right there, we ought to be at zero. So we're pretty close. If I squeeze a little bit harder, it'll go to zero. So you can see we're on zero right there. And we figured out in order, and my light's on by the way, because we did this little adjustment, in order to get it to crimp to the specification, which is 20.32 millimeter, we got to take this gauge and we got to take it so that instead of being on zero, it's sitting on 0 0.065. So that's what we're aiming for when we do our crimp. And then we'll measure it afterwards and see how close we got to our specification. All right. So all we got to do is open it up a little bit. You don't have to take it all the way home. Then we're just going to set this little fella in there. As long as it's big enough to slide through. And we're going to line him up. We're a little bit sticking out. Make sure the dies are all pushed back. Or else it'll give you an irregular crimp. Alright, so we're ready to crimp. And right now we are sitting on 0.3. So we got to go around and around and around until we get all the way down to 0 0.065. And by the way, I can move this. It's sitting on uh, 19 right now because that was my calibration. If I turn this up, one rotation would be 20. And then we'll do the 20.3. And we'll see if it turns our little light on for us right there. So all we got to do is just crimp, crimp, crimp until we get that thing to roll on around. So there is 0.15, so we got to go another rotation to get us to 0.1. All right, so there's 0.1. Right there, you can see we're hitting on our zero. So now we just got to work our way around to 0.065. So that would be 50 of a rotation and then 10 would be 0.6 so we got to go to the 15 right down there so we just keep cruising right there so that is 15 on it and let's see if our light came on so our light almost came on at 0.2 and that's right about 15 so there we go that ought to have it cramped down now we'll just bag it up and we'll measure it. So there's our crimp toes, looking pretty good, nice and tight. And you can see the little bitty bubbles that I put in there, they all got squished out. So that's good. Now we just want to measure this thing and see how close we got. So we are at 20.29 and our spec was 20.32 and it's plus or minus 0.13. So we're right on the money when we crimped it to that spot. 
All right, so just a real short video on how to crimp one, and there you go. It was nice and repeatable based on what we did before. The biggest thing is in the part one of the video, how to set it up using an indicator like this, and then how to go through the calibration and calibrate that thing. You'll have one that you'll have to do just to kind of get a feel for how much play is in it. And then after that, you should be set up, and you can just crimp, crimp, crimp. All right, well, we finished up all of our hoses, the three-eighths and the half-inch hoses for our Bobcat skid steer and its uh, backhoe digger. As you can see, all the fittings are gone, and the little fella survived, 30 in all. So, we can just look in there and see, and there's actually no wear on the dies. You can see where it crimped in the front because the fittings are shorter than the die. But, that all looks really good. He held in there. My arm's a little sore. But, we'll walk out there and see the pile of old hoses and then see what the new hoses look like out on the bobcat and the digger. Alright, so down in the tent is the bobcat and the digger over there. But first, here is the pile of old hoses. 30 in all. And the little crimper did good. It held up through all of them. So, that'd be 60 crimps that it did plus my test crimps. And no problems at all. It uh, finished out just as good as it did when it started. So, as you can see, we put it to the test and the little fella worked. So, it paid for itself quite easily with this many hoses. So, we'll walk down here and have a look and see what our new hoses look like. So, for the Bobcat, he got new hoses here. And then he got all of his hoses back here. And then up on top, the big array of hoses over here. So 14 in all on the little bobcat, and that worked quite well. A couple of them are bigger, the main feed lines. So those did good. We got a little more cleaning to do, but the little fella should be working now. So now we'll walk over here and look at his little backhoe digger and see where we had the other 16. And so this one had a couple big mains. Those are a half inch, and then the rest are three eighths. But all of these got redone. You can see I tagged them, color coded them so I could keep up with everybody. So all of those got redone, a couple down in the front. And then for my new cylinder, because my other one was junk, I got two new lines up there. So there we go. I guess that little fella will pay for itself for 500 and something bucks. Can't beat it with a stick. Well, alrighty. Thanks for watching.